Hello everyone, welcome back to Alpenglow. This is part number six. Today uh, you can see we're going to be working kind of on the left area of the screen here in this big flat area, um, mainly south or I guess below the uh, cloverleaf interchange that you just saw. But we're also going to be reworking the highway over here and we're going to be kind of creating sort of a like semi-highway part. It's sort of a highway, sort of just a normal arterial road. So we'll be working on that. Um, and we're also going to be laying down kind of like the basic um, road layout, like the main roads for this sort kind of suburban or like the beginning of like the suburban area. Uh, and we're also going to be doing um, sort of like a one of those town center, like external like town center areas I was talking about last time where it's kind of like one, you know, a town that's there and then it's grown and kind of met up with the main sprawl of Alpenglow. So we'll be working on that. Uh, and so while you're watching that, I want to talk a little bit about um, the kind of the schedule. Again, I bring that up a lot in these videos, but um, I, I, th I think that I put too much on myself to try to do three Alpenglow videos in two weeks um, because that is it was just a lot more work than I was expecting in addition to also being really busy the last week so that's or the last two weeks so that's why I didn't have uh, a video for last week so I'm sorry about that um, hopefully I can still continue with the weekly videos but I'm I don't think I'm gonna be able to do more than one video a week so going forward, I'm hoping that next week I'll be able to upload a, an episode of Toto Santos um, because I definitely have a lot of ideas going on for that and a lot of things I want to build. Um, but managing two sets of assets is uh, not too easy. And I have already built most, uh, pretty much all of Alpenglow, uh, but I still have to record a lot of cinematics for some of the episodes. And of course, like a final, you know, I want to do like a final cinematic video and you know some transit videos like following from the point of view of the light rail system that kind of thing uh, and that's going to take a while and i've been working on it slowly but um, I, i'm not close to done or anything like that so basically it's it's hard to go back and forth too much because it takes a long time and sometimes i have to end up uninstalling and reinstalling the game which takes a while and i just don't have too much time um, to be messing around with that kind of stuff so Hopefully I can get back into Toto Santos for next week. If not, you'll probably see another episode of Alpenglow. Um, and that'll just be until um, I've finished everything for this series. And then I'm going to get back, you know, 100% to uh, building in Toto Santos. And you'll keep seeing, we'll keep alternating every three weeks um, which series is uploaded until Alpenglow is done. And then we'll go back just to Toto Santos until I start another series, um, which I'm hoping to do probably fairly soon after Alpenglow is over. Um, I'm thinking it'll be a lot smaller, a lot smaller scale, um, more detailed, and fewer episodes, which um, that's something that I'm looking forward to because Alpenglow is actually pretty fast to build, but putting the episodes together takes a long time and doing this commentary is a little more difficult I think than doing it for Toto Santos because I'm not doing as much detailing there's not as much technique to talk about it's mostly just kind of expansion uh, like here I'm just kind of trying to fit a neighborhood in here you know I'm not really sure uh, how to make that interesting particularly in terms of commentary uh, I you know I'm doing my best but <laughs> sometimes it's kind of tough to do that sort of thing uh, I guess one thing I can mention is that this is very similar to uh, those sort of skinny neighborhoods we made last episode, I think last episode, uh, because it's sort of like the highway runs along here along the mountains, and the mountains are kind of like basically the border to the city. Like when you look at the big map of the city overall um, using the uh, City Skylines map exporter, whatever the mod's called, uh, it's the more recent one, it's not um, Cinematographer, uh, but the more recent one of that, when you look at that map, it's basically like, it just looks like this kind of skinny thing bordered by the highways, uh, and that's basically just because of the mountains. You know, there's there's a little bit of development on the parts where there are shallower slopes, um, kind of like a, you know, a hillside neighborhood, uh, and I don't, I'm not sure, I don't think I build that on camera, but you definitely see it in the, the cinematics and stuff. So it's kind of just like the city very abruptly ends in this kind of like center part of the map. Luckily, when we get out to like the, you know, kind of far reaches of the city in the beginning of the suburbs, um, it's a lot more open and you can kind of, we kind of uh, can more effectively show 
like the the reduction and like the density and stuff like that and that's pretty cool um, but for this part i really struggled trying to make something that made sense and didn't look dumb i i, I think it looks decent um and when it's all filled in when there are you know buildings and trees and stuff in here and we have like some cool bus lines going through and stuff and of course the train tracks there i think it you know there's enough interesting stuff to make it feel you know to make it fit and kind of not feel too out of place but of course i'll let you guys be the judge of that once you see the finished product uh, so definitely stick around there's a lot more to come in this episode we're doing a lot of different cool things and i think the cinematics are pretty sweet so hopefully you'll stick around for that or if you don't want to watch the build skip to the very end uh, and watch the cinematics just to see what i've done because i'm pretty happy with um, what we do in this episode so now as you can see here i'm kind of drawing out this sort of it ends up being like a main road uh, and this kind of blank area here um, is that uh, city center that I was talking about before. It's really, it has that kind of small town um, American West kind of vibe, uh, you know, maybe something that was built late 1800s, early 1900s with brick buildings um, and, you know, a small, somewhat dense core with some older, well, I imagine that they're older houses. It's just, you know, my only house set is what grows there, but um, just imagine that they're older houses uh, an older neighborhood that's that's popped up here and it's just a grid for the most part um, and I imagine that you know this big cloverleaf interchange here is kind of encroached on that grid so they've had to redo some of the roads so that they you know they either end as a dead end or they kind of curve around in a corner that kind of thing uh, so it's just a you know another example of um, roads that have been disrupted by the highway and I tried to have a little bit of logic of like that main road there um, kind of lines up with one on the other side of the highway so that it looks like that that has been kind of like cut in half and there's you know they didn't have the funds or the you know felt it was necessary to build a bridge or an underpass there or anything um, so that's kind of like cut up there and just kind of just another example of the the way the highways have kind of torn through the city and shaped the city one problem that i started to run into right about um the middle of this episode and on until the end of the series is that I kind of went back into detail mode um, but because of my very limited asset collection that I'm using for this I'm only using about 500 including like I think two or three hundred of those are just you know my my growable high density and low density residential buildings so I don't have a wide variety of assets at all I'm basically doing no detailing or I intended to do like no detailing but uh, I got really tired of seeing the, you know, some of the ugly vanilla buildings pop up and I didn't want to have to micromanage each one um, because if, if I'm going to have it be growable, I want to have it just grow into something that I want. I don't want to have to fix, uh, you know, big swaths of growable buildings because that's just not fun. There's no reason to do that. So eventually here you can see I'm starting to so first I start with like the ploppable service buildings that I have as options. And I pick out all the ones that fit and kind of drop those down, spread those out so that they, you know, so that they're not like all clustered together. Uh, and then eventually we start plopping down some growables. Um, and basically what I do is zone and then um, using find it, I search for the building I want and then I drop it down and then I have to go in and hit check that it's a historical building so that it won't despawn. Um, and you know this is all very inefficient but I just I could in this sort of area what I was looking for I couldn't stand having uh, just the you know only vanilla building because they they zone or they grow into something that uh, doesn't really make sense for the the type of look I'm going for um, and actually first I start off here just zoning and I don't really get what I want so I decide to try this. I don't even know if it's going to work, but I zone and then I, I plop down using find it. I don't think I actually show too much of that on screen because it's kind of <laughs> um, boring. But so I do that and then so all of those are marked as historical buildings. So they're not going to upgrade, but they visually w will not change. Um, so I keep doing that pretty much for the rest of the series other than, you know, the big kind of um, suburban sprawl type building like all this light green stuff you know the the low density residential that stuff i just let be because i'm using um the district style the uh american eclectic district style uh just to kind of get an overall feeling for like that sort of american suburban sprawl um and i, I think that works fine for this series since it's not too detailed 
Obviously going back into like Toto Santos or something, when we get into low density residential, it'll I'll probably be um, either zoning with, uh, you know, having different kind of sets of zoned buildings that I've detailed in the asset editor, because that's something people do, I guess. Uh, so I'll try that. Or they'll be hand placed and copied and pasted uh, in order to get both that kind of sprawling feeling, but also a decent amount of detail. Because you can see here, it's kind of just zoning fences, a couple paths, and then plop down a bunch of trees. And again, for this series, that's what I'm going for. I'm, I want more of this kind of vanilla-ish feel and um, focusing more on the sprawl. And so you can kind of see there the big uh, overview of that town center area. So now we're doing something kind of cool uh, because we did end up having, I wasn't originally planning to have development on the other side of the highway, but because we did end up doing that, uh, I decided to change that trumpet interchange into a diamond interchange because I figured it would make sense that when they were building this road or when they were building the highway, you know, whatever, they'd want this road to go all the way through um, because they'd want people to actually be able to access this neighborhood on the other side. You know, there's no reason to have a trumpet there uh, logically. But I imagine that maybe originally there was a trumpet there and this neighborhood is a newer. Uh, I'm not sure, in which case I think it would make sense to kind of have um, the surrounding road still kind of accommodate the space where the trumpet was, if that makes sense. Um, because, you know, if they're upgrading it or not necessarily upgrading, but changing from a trumpet to a diamond, um, they're, you know, they're going to have a limited budget and they're probably going to put all that money into actually doing the project instead of changing all the roads around it when they don't necessarily need to be changed so you can kind of see there's that big ro or, wow that small road that has that big loop around uh, you can't see it now right on the top right of the screen yeah that big loop around there that meets up with the um, road that comes across underneath the highway and that's I, th I thought that was just kind of a cool legacy um, for left over from having that trumpet interchange there and so now you can see I don't do a lot of detailing in the city, as I've mentioned many times before, um, but I could not stand this on-ramp here being basically like clipping the ground all around it. So I decided just to simply um, put in these concrete retaining walls and just kind of try to fit it in there just to make it look a little bit better. This would not pass in any of my other <laughs> detailed cities, but for this one, again, I'm just going for kind of the very barest of details and focusing on this kind of like more infrastructure type thing which I think is a lot of fun. Uh, so I have a question for you guys. This episode is quite a bit longer than the other episodes of Alpen Glow. Um, we're right now about like where most of the other episodes have been finishing. Um, so do you guys like this kind of longer like 20 18 plus 18 20 22 minute videos better or do you like the shorter videos better um, I think I'm gonna again do a poll uh, I did that in my other series um, for for various things so I'm gonna put a poll up now and hopefully you guys will respond to that and I'll kind of get a uh, you know a feeling for what you guys like I personally um, don't really care <laughs> often I found that it really depends on basic how much I record and how much I edit out, of course. Um, like, one of my episodes of Toto Santos was like 37 minutes long or something, which is the longest episode I've ever done, and I just had so much and I didn't want to cut any of it out. <laughs> so I ended up uploading, you know, almost a 40 minute video. Uh, and it seems like most people don't enjoy watching that as much, judging from analytics. Um, but I also, sometimes I feel like a 13 minute video isn't really enough to kind of make substantial progress um so it's it's really up to you guys i i personally think that like 18 20 22 minutes that's a good range for me uh definitely in toto santos because there's so much detail this series i think there's a little bit more leeway so um but overall do you guys like longer or shorter videos um, because you know if you want if you guys all want like hour-long videos, I'll totally just do that <laughs> I totally have enough footage to do that for every episode. So um, Yeah, I'll put that poll up right now on the top right uh, Let me know what you think and I will get back to you on that. So thank you for your feedback if you uh, do that uh, So now you can see I'm working on these bus lines here and what I want us to do because there are kind of these You know big skinny neighborhoods that just run along between the highway and the mountains here I wanted to kind of have a couple, and it's such a long area, I wanted to have kind of one bus line 
on one half of this sort of skinny neighborhood area and another bus line on the other half that meet up right here. Uh, those, so those yellow and that kind of like gross brown color, uh, those two bus lines. So it's sort of like an express line, but imagining that probably 99.9% .9 of passengers who, who want to take one of these two express lines aren't going to need to go from one side of the city all the way to the other. Um, so it, it allows for kind of just more, um, I guess it's just easier to kind of understand where the bus service goes uh, and they don't and they don't have to have basically one line with twice as many buses running. They have two lines with the same number of buses or you know a similar number of buses and it's just a little easier for passengers to take. And so that's just kind of my thought process with these two bus lines here that meet up at this kind of transfer point. And of course I've mentioned this before, we'll have an entire episode dedicated to just kind of reworking and uh, renaming all the bus lines. Here I'm making just another one to kind of go along this arterial road um, that will kind of connect sort of the more um, the kind of the farther reaches of one side of that sort of like two-part express bus line uh, up into this midtown area up here uh, and yeah I call it the midtown line uh, and of course we'll change that later we'll get rid of all these names um, and replace it with kind of like a numbering system which I think is, is pretty cool and here I figured they'd have um, so this highway here that kind of extends to the, yeah, um, <laughs> well, it's on the right now. I'm going really fast. But it's basically like the, the kind of the smaller highway that shoots off uh, beneath the cloverleaf. You saw it in the overview. It kind of goes down and, you know, through this area that's going to be this sort of suburban area. Um, that sort of is like somewhat of a highway. Like it has one last off ramp beneath the cloverleaf and that's what we're building here. We're kind of building sort of like a, a really bad diamond interchange. Um, it's basically way too, you know, the ramps are way too short. It's really squeezed in there. Um, cause I didn't want to have to rip out this whole side of the neighborhood. So I just kind of deleted a couple houses and moved it just to make barely enough room for this tiny little off ramp. And I figured, you know, every city that has a highway is going to have one off ramp at least that's awful and just way too short and you know everybody hates it but it's there uh, and it's probably you know all things considered it's probably better than no ramp there so this I, that sort of semi highway I was talking about it's pretty cool um, we do some really cool high capacity interchanges I think next episode or at least in the next couple episodes if not next episode and uh, you know we do a lot of traffic uh, manager stuff it's really cool so hopefully I'll see you back for the next episode of Alpenglow so you can see that. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you on Toto Santos, which hopefully we'll be back next week. We'll see. Um, if not, then you'll see another episode of this and you'll get that cool build. Uh, so I'm going to let you watch me just finish up this build, running this uh, light rail line underneath and doing the off ramps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you hopefully next week on Toto Santos. If not, then the next episode of Alpenglow. Bye. <music>